what is going on, everybody. Hello and welcome. This was supposed to be a gay day where I just play my dumb little uh my dumb little phone gotcha game. It was supposed to be my day off where I roll for my comma. I just want I just want one. I just want a Scotty loop with the comma. That's all I want. That's all I want. But unfortunately, there's a uh, really, really big news story, and it has a lot of layers in it, and it also gets really, really dark. I don't normally, um, I don't normally put these sorts of things in these sorts of videos. Um, I, I, I just want to forewarn you guys: we're gonna get into some really heinous and dark crap. So if you guys are uh, not really cool with that. No, no worries. Cause holy, holy man, dude, this is um, this is some rough stuff. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's let's get right into it. So uh, today, or well, the story actually sort of starts. This story's been brewing for a couple of days, but it's starting to get uh, like it came to a lot of people's attention today, specifically because of this. Um. This post found its way onto a uh, a subreddit, I believe. Uh, I want to say R UK politics. A welcome back statement or welcome back subreddit statement. As you will have noticed, the moderators set the subreddit to private last night. This is not a decision we took lightly, but one that was made to protect both the users and moderators of R UK politics. A moderator posted an article from The Spectator, which contained a three-word mention, in passing, of a minor British political figure expelled from both the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party, and was permanently suspended from Reddit and later reinstated after we contacted the admins for doxing as a result. As we had no, um, the, the the person posting the um, the person posting this was banned, not the uh, not the person in question being banned from Reddit, because we'll get into that later too. Um, as we had no idea what happened or why the posting this article resulted in a permanent suspension, we took the emergency step of making the subreddit private and immediately contacting the admins for clarification. We took this step to protect both the users of the subreddit ourselves from further action by the reddit admin staff it later became apparent that reddit was hired has hired this individual as a reddit admin and were banning people from discussing her past to protect their employee from harassment we would ask the following please do not name this individual at all Doing so may result in your account being banned by the admins. Please do not ask further questions about this, as doing so may result in your account being banned by the admins. Please do not discuss the incident on Reddit publicly or privately, e.g. your private subreddits and or in private messages, chat, etc., as doing so may result in your account getting banned by the admins. We are obviously extremely concerned by these developments, but cannot express our full dissatisfaction with Reddit on the platform at this time. So, basically, Reddit has hired a person, and because of that, they are apparently not even allowed to be discussed on any subreddit, even if they're not being discussed personally. Now, who is this person in general? Well, this person in uh, involved in this is one I and I don't know how to pronounce this name. Um, Amy Knight or Amy Channelor. Like it's a really weird Anglo name. I have no idea what's going on. The uh, article in question is a article from the Spectator by Julie Bendel, and the person in question doesn't get uh, mentioned until the very end. This part right here. The formidable feminist author and journalist Bay Campbell, a former Green Party candidate, resigned from the party last year after being disciplined in part for refusing to keep quiet about the shocking and disturbing Amy Chandler case. So, hmm. 
what 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 is this Amy Amy Chandler case? So Amy Chandler is a failed politician, um, and uh, uh, well, used to be called Amy Chandler, now na- known as Amy Knight because uh, they got married and took their husband's surname. And he's a bit, uh, he gets involved in this too, so don't worry about that. Um, so why was, why was, why was this person, Amy Chandler, uh, why was this person removed from the Green Party? Why was, why were they expelled from the Green Party? Well, that part's a little bit of a tricky question, because they themselves had resigned in protest of certain investigations that were involved in their campaigning in the UK. Um, specifically, and this is the really heinous part. This is the really heinous part. Um, specifically, this happened because, let me find the link. Um, let me find the, let me find the article real quick. Uh, I thought I had this on here. Sorry, give me one second, chat. I'm trying to find the. Uh, I'm trying to find the link. Do, do, do. Trying to find. I'm trying because it it was it was in result to their uh, their father. Oh, come on. You know, I should also probably put some uh, background music in here. Because they're like they they ha- they're so, they're wrapped up with so many weird people. Um, one second. Here we go. Uh, twisted pervert abused ten year old girl in Coventry torture den attic. A depraved Coventry man who held a young girl captive in his torture den attic was where as he played out his sadomasochistic fantasies on her was has been jailed for 22 years. Sick pervert David Chandler subjected the girl to horrific abuse, which included sexual abuse, tying her up, whipping her and giving her electric shocks. He even took photographs of the 10-year-old being tortured and abused to help him relive the shocking ordeal that he had put her through. When arrested, 50-year-old Chandler accused the girl of being a liar and a fantasist, but the police found the gruesome attic kitted out exactly how she had described. Despite that, he pleaded not guilty to charges including false imprisonment, rape, gross indecency, assault by penetration, indecent assault, and assault causing her actual bodily harm. Chandler of Charlehurst Road also denied taking indecent images of her, making indecent images of children by downloading them and possessing prohibited images. After almost nine hours at the end of an 11-day trial, the Warwick Crown Court found him guilty on all but one of the charges of taking indecent images by unanimous verdicts. Although he was jailed for 22 years, reordered Nicholas... Griff, uh, um, found him to be an offender of particular concern. Uh, that means being in, instead of automatically being placed on being released after serving half of his sentence, it'll be a matter for the parole board whether or not he's freed at that stage. So, luckily, uh, this this um, this um, this played out at least rightfully so this guy is in jail and will be most likely for the remainder of his life as he is 50 right now he will be 52 when he goes in there now play the sad hunter hunter music set in the background yeah um now why does this pertain to uh his his daughter why does this pertain to his daughter amy well this is because amy was a um a uh, uh, a politician uh, trying to work on, um, I believe, the Green Party at the start. The Green Party, for those of you who don't know, uh, the UK is a parliamentary sort of system where there's a lot of uh, smaller parties that actually have more relevance because they form coalitions with bigger parties to like sort of get their legislative actions at in the way. But like the Green Party accounts for like maybe two percent of the vote or something. They they don't they don't win a whole lot. They don't win. They don't win. A, they they don't win a whole lot um, at all. 
So, you know, it, it like it, small politician stuff. However, um, even after Amy had been made aware of uh, her father's actions and like, let's 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 be let's be 100 percent honest here. OK, Um, I fully believe in the concept of dual due process. I believe that it is right for the courts to decide how that person is dealt with and what happens to this person and all that stuff, especially since the courts pretty much unanimously found that this guy was guilty as shit. I also understand that a person um, can have maybe giving their, their family members the benefit of the doubt. But I'm going to ask people in the audience, if you found out that your, your, your parent... Uh, was being accused by a 10-year-old of sexually abusing them, and they were able to describe in detail their little rape attic, um, would you give them the benefit of the, of the doubt? Or, in my case, would you do what I did, would do, not did, what, what I would do, and I would just start running as close as I can to them and try to, like, stop whatever it is by any means possible? I would have like I I I I love my I love my father. I love my father. I love my mother. If something like that, if damning evidence like that with a 10-year-old came forward, I don't really know what I could do. I don't really know uh if I would be uh fully aware of my actions while doing it. Um but not only not only did Amy defend their father and uh the 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 mother the wife on the thing i think had the most heinous thing of all um all right let me let me let me also go to the to the to the to the wife's response to this let's 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 go to the wife's response to this chat your uh, your husband's been pretty credibly accused of sexually assaulting a child um you're asked for you 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 you're talking about them in general um how would you respond to uh, how would you refer to the person who's um how would you refer to the person that's uh, uh accusing your husband of this would you a just not talk about them at all would you b talk to them as about them as my husband's accuser c would you i don't know just like say like maybe even side with her it's like my husband's victim or d would you call this person a lying slut. Cause, um, his wife, uh, went with, with, uh, lying little slut. So, um, okay. 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 Again, I want to make it perfectly clear that this person has not been accused of um, aiding in her father's depravities or um, has been accused of any depravities of her own. Uh, that's, that's the important thing. All the people so far that are connected to this person aren't really connected to them via like, or like all the things that are going on aren't connected to like anything that they've done. It's to the people around them and how they handled that situation. However, however, if you're a politician and your father is pretty credibly uh, accused of this sort of thing, um, you probably wouldn't hire them for your, uh, you probably wouldn't hire them for your uh, campaigning. And you probably wouldn't do shit like, um, I don't know, make it so that your political party's bylaws make it really harder to expel people accused of heinous crimes and make it easier for the party to expel people for uh, not holding the correct views at the time. 
Uh, child rapist David Chandler's needed Amy to infiltrate the Green Party, so it makes sense to propose an extraordinary amendment that child rapists would not be expelled, but people with different views would be. <laughs> oh, no. Um... So, uh, section 4.2, if the complaint concerns a me if the complaint concerns a member who has been convicted of a criminal offense of a nature which would pose a threat to the party, to being a uh, to the well-being of the party or its members, disciplinary committee may take the decision to express, uh, expel the member forthwith. Um, amendment uh, amendment four and eighteen. Co-signed by Sean McCauley, Hannah Clare, Adam McGregor, Alan Hale, Doug Roxel, Emma Carter, Darren Wells, Claire Lorraine Phillips, Amy Chandler, Chrissy Jones. A fragment of this amendment has been ruled out of order. Amendment 18. Delete Propose Clause 4.2 and add a new clause following if the complaint concerns a criminal offense of a nature that would cause... I pose a threat to the well-being of the party or its members. The complaints manager should signpost external bodies or sources of information to the complainant. The committee will also refer to the complaint, or the complaint to the co-chairs of the Green Party to consider a meet suspension of the respondent for a duration of any investigation. The committee should seek legal advice if necessary. So originally, it was just. Like, you did something criminal and you've been convicted of it. Like, if you are a danger to our party's well-being, you're getting the fuck out. Goodbye. This one, and this was this was during 2018, while her father was being um tried for these sexual assault charges. This was this was after this was two years after her father had been arrested and was currently ongoing trial. Hmm. Um, so Amy, um, now one of the things to understand about Amy is that Amy is, uh, transgendered and trans advocacy is a big part of, I guess their position within the green party kind of makes sense you would go for the people that you like you would go for the people that you know know this sort of stuff if you're trying to position yourself into a political way that's what you do that's what you would do right um now if you do this sort of stuff and the party uh investigates you and asks hey why were you going so far as to continue to hire your father even though he was facing these damning allegations why did you put these sorts of things into the uh in try to put these things into the um in, in into the bylaws of our party why why would you why would you do any of this um we're going to have to put an investigation on to you and of course this just smacks of uh of of transphobia this is this is this is this is clearly an attack on her personal gender identity so uh let me find the clip or right, let me find the let me find the picture um where is it uh, it's also uh, also on the Kiwi Farms thread. Um, I don't know if this is like the victim in question, but uh, it seems as if Amy had uh, tried to confront her father's accuser on Facebook, uh, saying it would be better if you could answer my texts. Just come to the police and speak to me. Just had the police come and speak to me. What texts? So like this is apparently the victim, the uh, the like underage victim still. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Where is it? So, um. Well, Amy decided the, uh, decided, decided to blame transphobia for the reason that they were leaving the Green Party. 
Uh, Amy Chandler was suspended amid investigations into her father, who is jailed for child sex offenses, acting as an election agent. The activist, who dropped her bid to become deputy leader after her father's conviction, said trans members of the party had faced a hostile environment. The Green Party said it was on the forefront of advocating trans rights, which, given the fact that, um, given the fact that the the person in the article that was mentioned that sparked all of this, or at least sparked me wanting to stream about this, had mentioned that they were kind of like shut up in silence about talking about the green party and its role in like trying to cover this up. Now, I don't know if the green party was doing this for nefarious purposes. I think that the green party just like didn't want the bad press of like one of their, one of their people being like managed by a convicted pedophile. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm going to guess it most likely wasn't because they decided, you know what? We don't like trans people. Get the fuck out of here. Um, so they left, they left the green party essentially. Uh, so you would think that this would be the end of their political career. Uh, you'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. Uh, because they then went on to join the Liberal Democrats, a more, like, mainstream party, uh, within the, uh, UK. It's, like, uh, I think it's, like, a little bit more popular than the Green Party. The, the major left-wing party in the UK right now is, uh, Labour, but I think the, I think the Liberal Democrats get, like, 7% of Labour voters' votes in general, so like they're 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 still pretty popular. They're still pretty popular. Um so step up. So uh what happened to get her ousted from this one because again, they got removed from this party too. Well, in the interim between then and now, uh Amy got married, which is why uh their name is now Amy Knight. And their husband's tweets are, um, a little bit questionable. Nathaniel White tweets, Ah, sees NN is looking into my past and making me the bad guy now. As long as I'm going to be the target anyway, let's be open and honest about a few things. Whistleblower 118087 uh, has shared with the MN class. Let's share all of it with you. And I swear to goodness, if any of you clip me out of this, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to forgive you, okay? I'm not going to forgive you. I have given a reply to a self-claimed 13-year-old's girl on Quora on the topic of masturbation. I offered the advice that masturbation is natural and should be explored safely as she sees fit. I posted no images or graphic depictions there. My YouTube favorites do, indeed, contain the Vocaloid song titled, I Can Take Off My Panties which is a song lyrically about teenage girls exploring the mental and social lines between adult and child. Like many Vocaloid songs, it is a upbeat pop song. And the lyrics hold deeper meanings than a cursory glance at the title might suggest. Yes, I have written smut. I have written smut featuring minors. I have written smut and featuring incest. I have written smut featuring things that are not ethically sound or morally right in the real world. I also write smut featuring adults. The story cited is not one of my favorite stories, but an idea I had nearly half a lifetime ago. I wrote out and published out of Hablet to publish more than a lust for children. My fan feature fiction tends to feature minors for one simple reason. Those are the characters in the stories I am writing. And those are the ages at which I can best explore those characters based on their official descriptions. 
Sometimes I still engage in age progression of them to fit the stories I'm telling, though. Yep. I have no reason to hide the fact that I am sexually, uh, I am sexually awakened adult, uh, didn't proofread this, sorry, uh, who has fantasies that might be unethical to explore in real life. Many conservatives in my country seem to have their own unethical fantasies about killing people who disagree with them. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Hey, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I may be sexually attracted to the idea of having sex with minors, but at least I'm not a Republican. <sighs> We're halfway through. I have fantasies that write stories about in order to explore and let out. I could explain common reasons for mind control fetishism, but they wouldn't matter to my enemies. So let's focus on the fact about hypnotism in real life and not many stories depict it. Hypnosis is a therapeutic tool for self-actualization and self-improvement. It allows the subject to achieve changes they want more quickly and easily. You cannot, in real life, be hypnotized into doing something you do not want. Back to fantasizing. Yes, I fantasize about things I don't want to do in real life. I fantasize about things that are some combination of impossible, unethical, or otherwise outside my personal capacity to act upon outside of fantasy. I fantasize about jumping 20 feet high. Okay, so I want to give a little bit of context. I want to give a little bit of explanation about something, okay? So, um, in our heads, we get, um, we get like, uh, sporadic thoughts, you know what I mean? Like, everyone has had a fleeting thought of killing somebody that they don't like, of just killing somebody that annoys them. Sometimes people just have sick thoughts about, like, I want to just grab that dog and I want to throw it off a cliff. The thing is, the thing that differentiates... Uh, people who have like just normal random fleeting thoughts and people that should be a bit of concern are the people that have those thoughts and don't immediately think that it's revolting to do. The people who hold on to those thoughts and then dive into them and then work out about them in, like, fantasy-type ways, especially for sexual gratification, those people are very, very unwell. Does that make sense, chat? I, I think that makes sense. It's the, um, it's the, it's the, um... It's like the psychology 101 thing that, like, if we didn't have inhibitions, we would do really depraved and, and just absolutely screwed up stuff. It's our it's our inhibitions that 99% of the time keeps us from, like, doing things that would land us in prison. You know what I mean? Your ego and super ego prevent the thoughts of the id from coming out of your mouth. Exactly. Okay, so I just wanted I just wanted to like give like my understanding of like basic psychology. I just I like this is this is why like what he's saying is like somewhat true, but he's doing it very dishonestly and he's being a gross piece of crap about it and he's using it to uh to um to to justify being a weird piece of crap. By V. And I don't think that means I can or that I would it would be safe to do so. I fantasize about children having sex, sometimes with adults, sometimes with other children, sometimes kidnapped and forced into bad situations, sometimes coerced through fantasy mind control. Then again, 
I don't fantasize about torturing people for my own enjoyment. I don't fantasize about real children. Every story I've written features fictional characters. Even if I fantasize myself with a fictional child, I have never looked at actual real child pornography. I told you guys it would get really dark. It's a fantasy, like a child who pretends to be a dragon while their friend is a dragon slaying knight or a robber while their friends pretend to be police. It's make believe and imaginary. Okay, I'm gonna take a breath. I'm gonna take a breath. I'm getting, I'm I'm actually I'm actually getting like I'm actually getting really disgusted at this. Oh my gosh. Uh. So how can Amy Chandler work with vulnerable teenagers when she's in a relationship with me? How can she be in a relationship with you when their father? Had the exact same kinds of fucked up thoughts, dude. Like, really? What the fuck is going on here? When she's in a relationship with me, I don't have a violent bone in my body, and I have no interest in real children. In more than half my lifetime, I have not graduated from a fetish for fantasy children to a fetish for real, living, breathing children. I have never committed a single act of offense towards a real child. Give this guy a fucking medal, I guess. I don't even fantasize about real children. He's really hung up on that technicality. Consent requires mature awareness and reasonable equality in partnership. Without consent, all sex is rape. It's all, it's all rape now. 6C, I will not engage in any sexual interaction without consent from a person with a mature mind and understanding of sex. I do not rape because despite having some fantasies of rape, I do not genuinely wish to rape anybody of any age. BDSM, do the, 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 the cock and ball tor torture, BDSM. Without understanding of consent is abuse. BDSM. Without respect for consent is abuse. BDSM. With an understanding of the utmost respect for consent is not abuse. I am not purging my past to whitewash myself. I've done questionable things in my life. I've written questionable stories. You think? Uh, but I have no desire to harm people, even those who disagree with me. I have no desire to silence dissent until dissent becomes threats. Well, I guess that, uh, I guess that, I guess that, uh, I guess that her husband, uh, doesn't share her same mindset, I guess. So if you want to talk, begin by listening or reading. Educate yourself, you bigots. Do what you want to respond and don't spew pointless nonsense. I love the lectures that I'm getting from this person. Holy shit. Um, oh, one last note. I know nothing about the individuals Amy works with or represents except as a class of people. I don't ask. She doesn't volunteer it. And she doesn't put any of them in contact with me. Aside, funny how I am happy to address this openly, but the mn -er, I don't know what that is, that had to hide behind anonymity. I know myself and am comfortable addressing my bad points, but I guess they must fear for their safety if anyone ever knows who they are.
So, um, suffice to say, uh, Amy Knight's uh, husband prompted an investigation with the uh, Liberal Democrat Party, and um, and uh, and and they were promptly removed from that party. So they've been kicked out of two political parties so far. Um, now, again, like I said before, what spurred on the conversation about this uh, individual is again this post. Um, the fact that the um, that the uh, the uh, the subreddit r slash uk politics and apparently poli like anything anywhere on Reddit, it does not matter if it's not even an article about this person. If you mention Amy Chandler or Amy Knight at all, then you are going to get looked at and they will most likely ban you because a member of their moderation team does not like the fact that they keep on getting connect, kicked out of political parties because they run defense for these types of people. This is... um. Don't don't we love our censorship? And I I gotta I gotta point out I gotta point out. Um, and this is like we're we're done criticizing um like Reddit as a as a whole being run by this. And honestly, the Amy Chandler stuff like basically is 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 kind of I, I I've been reading some of this and it's just really disgusting. And um, I think that this post kind of sums it up. Um. Um, one, I think that the really, like, depressing thing is how fucking, like, slavishly these people accept this. Like, Redditors have been, Redditors have been so thoroughly broken that, uh, that, that they, they just kind of take this and, and, and do it. Like, some people are complaining, but, like, they're just, like, you know, someone who has made excuses for their not's husband covered up the fact that her dad was also a nunce, moderates our tra slash transgender teens, and has been made an admin. How fucking immune from criticism and approach does being trans make you exactly? Christ. Imagine a cis man with those same credentials. Wouldn't be allowed near moderation of subs involved with being children, and certainly wouldn't be a paid admin. And I think... And I, and I guess the, the final takeaway that I want to I, I want to take from this, and again, I want to I want to just... I want to specify my my views on this. Um, I do not subscribe to the idea that all trans people are um, are like sexual predators and are evil people. You know what I mean? I don't think until a person individually does something that they should be judged for like these sorts of things. That's just that's just how I feel because I've met people that are trans. They're decent people. However, however, it is imperative, I believe. It is absolutely imperative if people belong to the uh to the um to the LGBT people, if people in that community really value their community, they really need to like call this sort of shit out. Because this right here is like a li living walking confirmation bias if you don't like trans people. This is this is this is walking, living, breathing, shouting like uh, out and proud will rub it in your fucking face with a smug grin on its face. Confirmation bias. Because this person is not being criticized because they're trans. They're using the fact that they are trans to shield themselves from any fucking criticism. From any, any sort of discussion about what they enable and what they, what they ignore and what they are completely fine with. And I think that that's just, I, 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 I think that that's really shitty. And um, it needs to be called out. Um, if you are a person who is from Reddit and you've watched all the way through, uh, I would advise you to get off of this slavish mindset where you accept this sort of shit. Um, because this is disgusting. Like, you can't discuss this person because it's tangentially related to 
like the them being ousted because they ran cover for their father that sexually abused and tortured a 10 year old girl. Like, get out of this fucking mindset. Holy shit. Um, if people do want to talk about this person, uh, the people over on Kiwi Farms um, are allowing any and all discussion. Just look up Amy Chandler and you can go into any of the discussion that is revolving around this person or this event that will not get censored because um, Noel will fucking tell uh, federal authorities outside of his country that they can go fuck off too. Just don't talk about uh, Fed posting. You'll be fine. So... Yeah, um, the, the case in point, uh, censorship took a really dark turn today.